It was four times two minutes. That's right. Item number 10, discussion and action of Sonoma County Waste Management Agency Board request that the city conduct a discussion of the agency's future and looking at potential alterations to the JPA. I know our city manager is our representative and I'm thrilled that he brings us the staff report. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, and we have with us tonight uh, Henry Micas, who is the executive director of the Waste Management Agency. He's here to help me in, in this presentation and we'll make uh, some, uh, I'm sure, some remarks uh, towards the when I conclude with my uh, staff report, and uh, also will be here to answer any questions for you. I'm going to attempt to distill down a pretty complicated item into, uh, into the key issues for you. Just as a way, a bit of a background, um, the Waste Management Agency was formed in 1992 as a joint powers authority of the nine cities and county to provide programs to comply with the statewide mandatory waste diversion standards. Its core programs are the compost facility at the central disposal site under a license from the county and currently operated by Sonoma Compost, a household hazardous waste program also at the central disposal site and utilizing local community pickup events as well, and outreach and educational activities including the annual recycling guide. The agency also manages the countywide carry out bags ordinance, which was adopted in 2014. The agency is funded by a tip fee surcharge on waste delivered to the landfill. Its governing board consists of a combination of elected officials from various cities in the county or employees from its member cities. So it's a combination, board is a combination of elected and employees from member cities and the county. Your current representatives are the engineering director, Sue Kelly, and myself. Sue Kelly was a long-standing uh, representative to the board and went through strategic planning and other things with the board, but in view of her retirement, I have in the last year or so largely taken over that function and in recent months have been the, basically the sole representative for the city and <coughs> plan on continuing to do so. <coughs> the agency has bylaws which require unanimous voting for adoption of its budget, adding new programs, and for expenditures over $50,000. The agency's JPA agreement expires in February 2017. The agency is currently engaged in a process to select a new and expanded compost site and facility, a process that's been underway for several years and which is now com nearing completion. Its ability to complete that process, plus carry out its other functions, has become problematic due, due to the expend pending ex expiration of the JPA agreement. Thus, discussions have been underway for some time to determine if the cities and county wish to extend that agreement. A draft agreement was prepared by the agency's then legal counsel for circulation, but a number of members and their attorneys had concerns about some of its provisions. For this reason, the agency has requested that each member present a matrix of key issues to its members to provide feedback to assist in drafting a new proposed JPA agreement, which would then be presented to all the members of the agency. So essentially tonight, we're bringing to you a matrix of key issues having to do with ex extension of the JPA agreement or not, and if extended, what would the JPA look like, what would the agency look like in the future. This is to provide guidance for the future, but any action that's taken would come back to you for more formal action at a later date. All of the cities in the county are in the process of having those discussions. So your agenda packet tonight includes not only the staff report and a white paper prepared by the agency which gives you all the background information and details of the makeup of the agency, its functions, its history in great detail. There is a decision matrix which I'm going to take you through tonight. We've also supplied you, and thank you Henry for this, an updated summary of the decisions which have 
been made, again, these are tentative decisions, by the, age, the cities and the county, excuse me, the cities which have already gone through the matrix. So at the time that this summary was prepared, six cities had gone through the process, and that's what the um, summary contains, <coughs> which are the last two pages of the staff report. The, this does not include the Santa Rosa's review or the counties. The task for this evening is for the county, or for the council to go through the issues matrix and provide direction to me, your board representative. As I said, for a preliminary introduction to going through the matrix, I've consulted with Sue Kelly quite a bit about this. Sue Kelly's gone through the strategic planning with the agency. In her opinion and my own, small cities like Sebastopol derive a definite benefit from the continued operation of the Waste Management Agency. I think that's indicated by the responses of the small cities which have already considered the matrix. So the last two pages show you in this summary, a number of the small cities have essentially reached consensus on many of these items, and the summary of that basically is that the agency should go forward. It's their clear preference that the agency and programs be retained, but with changes to the governing process and bylaws to provide for easier decision making. So, I'd like to ask Henry if he wants to make a few comments at this point, if the council is pleased with that. And um, then possibly we go into the matrix discussion at that point. Larry, you did a great job summarizing. I could have done better. I wish I had that recorded that I could have keep you early on in this process. We have it recorded. We'll sell it to you. <laughs> You're at the end. See, I needed this two weeks ago when we started. I, I, I don't have much to add to that at all, um, other than that I, the last time I was here was to talk about a third amendment, and y'all were very supportive. Uh, unfortunately, um, there were some issues that other cities had, so we had to kind of hit the restart button. And that's why we're back again. I don't want to take away from your effort to try to help us before. Mm -hmm. And apologize for having to come do this again with you. But uh, yeah. Larry did a great job of setting the stage. And I'm here for any questions you might have as you go through the list. So, Mayor and Council, if I could just suggest uh, an approach, perhaps, before I go into the matrix, council members could ask any questions of uh, Henry or myself about the programs or history of the. Uh, waste Management Agency issues or uh, questions you might have from reviewing the white paper and then uh, whatever point in time you direct, I would suggest then we start going through the uh, matrix, decision matrix, and what I'd like to do with that item, if the council agrees, would be to go through and basically explain these items quite briefly as we go through them and indicate uh, from the summary what the other small city's decisions have been and what my recommendation would be. That sounds perfectly workable and brevity is appreciated. So, that is major, major, major. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess just, just dive in. I actually have one question. Oh, question. Uh, uh, in your white paper, in a like a little sidebar of text, it says renewal of the JPA for 25 years past 2017 is necessary to achieve the goal of a new snow compound county composting facility. Mm -hmm. is, is is that do is that to give you a time frame adequate enough to amortize the cost of that? Yes, sir. Exactly correct. Okay. All right. That's what I understood. Thank you. So if the council could turn the staff report to, it looks like a detachment of B, that's the City of Sebastopol Council's version of the matrix with the questions to be addressed. Now to the left, of, if you turn to that document, which is in, here in yeah, the back area of the staff report, the column on the left, board consensus of the June 2014 strategy discussion, that's always been contained in this matrix for your information. That, again, was the strategy discussion I talked about, which uh, Sue Kelly participated in, and the other board members did too. I 
that's useful for whatever guidance it helps give you about what the board felt at that time. To me, the more usable documents, the last two pages of the uh, staff report, which is the current summary of the six cities that have already gone through this. So I just wanted to explain, that's what that left column is. That was a strategy discussion. So the main question number one in the matrix is, do you want to continue a regional approach for dealing with the various programs that the agency's been doing? In other words, do you want to do that in our region, keep control of that in the Sonoma County? And I think you can see from the summary and certainly my recommendation that there would be, at least from the other cities of our size and practically all of them, all support yes on that, that uh, we continue a regional approach for dealing with these important programs. Are we looking for comments? Now or later? Yes. 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 Do you want to vote on it? Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this item? Thank you for the reminder. Seeing no one come forward, we will close the <laughs> comment, and now we will proceed to the thumbing. Uh, Thank you. Best council ever, right? <laughs> yeah, we're the best. Such a you, just, you, just quite new, yes. you, you just quite a new meeting technique. No, my team of wire did that. Oh, okay. We did that, we did that with the, JP, the library, JP. But did he call it thumbing? We will now proceed with the thumbing. Yeah, I want to trim 1A, composting. Yes. Larry, do you want to take over? Composting. Where yes. are you? I'm lost. 1A. <laughs> oh, that has two pages. Uh, Just keep reading here. Where we one? It's the uh, that's our oh, that's, This one is the first. Uh, yeah. And you can compare okay. it to the other part. So composting, regional approach. Yes. Yes. Household hazardous waste, regional yes. approach. Yes. yes. Educational functions. Yes. yes. Planning and reporting. Yes. yes. Next question number two is, what is your preference on who performs those services? The agency or the county or a mix? Now, the, the situation on the compost site is, is in some degree of lack of clarity at this point. Um, as you all lawyer time, as you all noted that so in terms of trying to settle a lawsuit, um, Sonoma Compost position uh, as the company doing the actual composting um, is in some jeopardy and is destined to cease as of October one under the present settlement of a citizen lawsuit that was brought. However, the agency board is continuing to go forward for in its selection process to site, locate a site for a new, the new facility, whoever would run it. So as you see from the summary, the who performs these services, services I've gone through, service number A being composting. Um, several cities who have looked at this wanted to kind of defer the decision on composting for later until that situation clarifies. One way or the other, I would say, it's safe to say, and Henry can correct me if I'm wrong, that his opinion, but the Board of Directors of the Waste Management Agency is going to go forward with its process in determining the correct site for a new compost facility, if you ever would run it. Mm -hmm. The other cities want to say, come back to this item, after the agency goes forward with that uh, process a bit more. Otherwise, I would say that the cities of our size and the majority of the cities clearly uh, want the, uh, the agency to continue doing these items, composting and household hazardous waste education and reporting and planning. So that is my recommendation as well with an asterisk next to compost to be determined at a later date. Yeah, and I'd like to understand better why why is some compost separated? Uh, why why was it brought? They're sort of taking one for the team, it seems like. Yeah. Well the 
there was allegedly discharge, water discharges during the rainy season. Well, why, no, I'm saying why, why is Liston and Compost always separate from police management? Is it Robert, they were one of our contractors. Yeah. So they're a subcontractor to you? Yes. yes. So, so, so with the compost facility, we had the saw waste permit with Cow Recycle, and they contracted with us for a fee to actually do the work okay. on the road site. You know, the agency license uh, operates the compost facility under a license from the county, and as, as Henry said, it has a contractor who performs the actual service. Um, is our finance director ready to? Good night. Thank you. Make her plug her computer. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Pleasure looks awesome. So it's staff recommendation at this time at least that the agency uh, perform these services, all four of them, composting to be determined with more information um, of forth, but especially the other three items. So that would be my recommendation to the council. Okay. The, um, if the item number three, if uh, there's a preference for these responsibilities remaining with the agency, what is your preference on the term of the agency? Its current term is, which is coming to an end, is 25 years. The question is 25 years or no fixed term, some other. You'll see the summary. Um, several cities are comfortable with extending it for a full 25 years. Katati, uh, uh, opinion was no fixed term. Um, Petaluma wanted a 20 year minimum. I mean, um, it's a lot of effort and work to keep the agency going once it's instituted. I think it certainly makes a lot of sense that the agency uh, is extended for quite a few years so they can enter into contracts, do long term financial planning, and so forth. So, um, staff's recommendation would be for the council to commit to a lengthy term, and staff would probably recommend 25 years, but certainly some long period of time. I'm fine with 25 years. Me too. I was curious if no fixed term meant in excess of 25 years. It meant in perpetuity. Yeah. A lot of JPAs are like that. Is it, is it likely, how likely is it, I should say, that no fixed term would result in less than 25 years. Theoretically, it could. Theoretically, it could, but then 25 years could also. Because I believe whatever, and I'm going to defer to Larry as the lawyer, but it seems that whatever agreement would be written would have to have some language in there for termination, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it had a fixed term. Yeah, well, I, I noticed that um, Petaluma said 20 year minimum, and I was wondering if. You could say no fixed term with a 25 year minimum, or is that just too open ended? It's whatever y'all want. Yeah. If I could say just a word about some of the other cities, Petaluma, for example, obviously also the city of Santa Rosa, even to some extent, Roner Park, all three of those are cities which have the ability to do a number of these um, services on their own. They could do them themselves, possibly even compost certainly do these other ones on their own if they wanted to do so. We don't have that ability. So, Petaluma did its own study of whether it could do some of these services and, it's, and, the, and the study also uh, reviewed the agency's um, ability to do these services. And they're coming from their own perspective though, which we don't have, which is that they could do some of this on their own and are, in fact, going their own way in some cases. So I look at this, as I go through the summary, I look to see what the other cities, our side, can do, because we really do need the agency to do these services, uh, given our size and staffing. Okay, I was just looking at even longer than 25 years. I don't think garbage is going away. No fixed term. Yeah, but I, I want to try to avoid, that's why I say with a minimum of 25 years, you know, because so you can have something blow up in 12 years and 
gone. Right. There's yeah. always an ability to terminate it, but the current term is 25 years, and that didn't happen. Okay, I guess 25 is easy. Okay. The next question was, do you want to allow members to opt out of some agency programs? Yeah. You know, Henry may help me on this, but I think one issue might be if you don't have all the members uh, opting in for all these programs, there may be difficulties in funding some of these. So, Henry, what is your viewpoint on this one? Well, we've had to study this a good bit because, as you've seen from the summary, there's some people that may wish to, you know, do a menu and pick and choose. Okay. And I think our conclusion is that composting is done on a per fee basis of users. So, if a city opts out, then I would expect there would be some kind of a non-member fee structure put in place for them. Same with hazardous waste. I mean, that could be, those pe those pieces could be truncated to uh, a reduced number of members and still offered as a service for some kind of a fee. Uh, planning and reporting is similar to that. Um, we found out from Calvary Cycle, if we lose members, we could still redo the base studies that started all that stuff with minimal expense. The problem we have is the education thing, because we do that as an objective um, level playing service for everybody that's involved in the solid waste business, business, nonprofit, government, or whatever, large, small, we treat them all the same. And there we do have some heartache trying to think how you could separate out and not do that job on passing the word to the community as a whole and carve out some city that doesn't want to be part of it. And our thought there was, again, maybe at the end of the day, you'd be able to sit down with a city that didn't want to participate and say, you know, if you pay a fee, it's a per percentage of the expense that program carries, maybe that's the way we could do it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that in every instance, if you, people want to work it out, there's ways to make it work. But if I may ask, what are your thoughts to a hybrid of, Katadi said no on the four or programs, but yes to the others, and I'm thinking of a hybrid of no opt out on the core or core programs, and yes, you may opt out, but the withdrawing members have to pay costs. Yeah, that, Windsor had a nice take on that. I don't think I may not have articulated in the summary because of those space limitations. They weren't real happy with the thought of anybody opting out, but in the end, they said, okay, as long as things are put in place to keep the, fi the agency financially whole. And they went to the detail of saying, well, you know, if somebody wants to opt out in July, they've got to be responsible for the rest of that fiscal year. You can't just opt out and pull a plug on things that are set in place finance-wise. And that approach, it makes sense to me. You know, if you want out, fine. But do your part to make it viable at least through the end of the, the fiscal year so that the agency can plan for the next year. So that was another thing that seemed to be an acceptable. So is there any consensus on the Windsor position? I mean, really, your four core programs are what your agency is all about. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just as one council member, I am motivated to say no withdrawal from the four core programs. I mean, otherwise, then people What's start the picking point? and choosing. What's the point? You know, cherry pick what they want to be playing in. Mm -hmm. And it could change every year and change, and cities could change up. Turns into a crazy management yeah. situation. Yeah. I mean, it's like a cash flow that's not predictable. So, yeah, <laughs> I thought, like, John, that no was a smart choice here. Yeah. Because if you just have to pay your cost to the end of the fiscal year, you're still a no the next year. Yeah, Somebody else can be a no on something else. Mm -hmm. right. You got to be in it together. Yeah, we're in it together. There you go. So the answer is no for the four I four programs. I'm the no. Yeah. So it's just a hardcore no on the four core programs. Right. On the four core programs. On the four core okay. Program. Yeah. Or with Tony. Now the next series of answer, uh, questions has to do with the voting requirements. The presently, as my brief introduction indicated, the uh, bylaws, 
The bylaws require unanimous vote for budget approval, capital expenditures greater than $50,000, and major program expansion. In my time on the board as a board member, I've seen that this does present some difficulties in decision making. That, um, well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you have to have unanimous vote, you have to have people present, you have to have everybody willing to vote in favor of something or it's not going to happen. Um, the number of cities in the county that are part of this uh, uh, board makeup, that's been problematic. It's, re it's uh, necessitated items being returned to a subsequent month's agenda, being repeated. Um, when meetings run long, people want to leave, but they can't maybe because of the unanimous vote requirement, or if they do leave, then there isn't the ability to have a vote. So there's been a number of reasons. Can we think of any more on this there? Not even covered. <laughs> so yeah, that's and unfortunately, the biggest problem has been things that you can't avoid. Board member getting ill in the morning of a board meeting, and nobody knows. Mm -hmm. That's happened a couple times, unfortunately. So if you look through the summary here, it's pretty obvious that Almost everybody, except Petaluma. They uh, want veto power is what they want there. <laughs> almost everybody else is favoring changing the voting requirements to either a supermajority of 8 out of 10 or a supermajority of 7 out of 10. And um, then you go down and see who, which of the particular items that you would apply that to. Uh, certainly my recommendation, I don't have a particular preference for whether it be 8 or 10 or 7 or 10. Um, I, if I pushed, I'd have to favor one of the other small cities, a couple of them at least went with a 7 out of 10. I think that that's a fair way to, uh, to vote for these uh, items. And then the council should also go, in my opinion, that's what my recommendation is, you need to also go through under item six, uh, specifically whether you prefer a supermajority approval of each one of these items. And uh, I believe in every single case, all of these uh, A through F, all the small cities were in favor, uh, and then the majority of them were in favor of a supermajority approval of each one of these items. Uh, we can go down them item by item if you wish, but. My recommendation would be for a supermajority of each one of these items. So uh, let's go with number five. Do we want seven out of ten or eight out of ten? Number five, what? I would say seven. I would say seven. I eight. support seven. I could just be I support eight. eight. I support number seven. Five. Right now it has to be a hundred percent, right? Unanimous. Unanimous, that's correct. Is, so those so three eight, items. So but eight is not unanimous. No, it's eight or ten. But number six is the one that goes through each one of these in detail. Right, but we're looking at five. Is it eight or seven or eight? Well, what we wanted to do, ma'am, was take the list of three that currently exist for unanimous vote. So the first question is, do you want to keep unanimous or not? And then the second question, we've expanded the list. Right. Oh, okay. That's so, kind of the way it's been put. So assuming you don't want to keep the unanimous vote requirement for these number right. five items, then you go through right. number six, each one specifically. Right. So right. no... No unanimous vote is needed. So that's the answer to five. Right. So then right. going down to number six and go through those. So. Okay, and seven is what did you call a super majority? Question seven. Right. Once you go through the super, the six item, the yes. items under number six, then you decide whether it's which kind of super majority you were talking about. So purchase of real property is the council okay with the super majority? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes on all. I agree. Yeah. I, I have a question on 6F, the position taken by pet by owner in park where it says must go back to members. Is are, by members are they referring to members of the city council? Yes, coming back to a group like this. So, the so, governing body. so do we want to retain coming back to the full council for amendments to the JPA or are we happy with leaving it in the hands of our representative? Our experience with the library was 
sent representatives and brought every item back. Yeah, that's, so if I'm understanding you correctly, the council did weigh on in on amendments to the JPA, in this case of the library. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, so that makes six, six A, B, C, D, and E all yes, and on F, are we saying the back to member council, back to councils, back bring it back to council. I believe that's what on F. Is. Six F. I'm good with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for talking about that. Number seven is which type of supermajority example of library JPA seven out of ten or an eight out of ten vote? Seven. 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 It was all five seven. Eight. Yeah, I think eight. Yeah, I thought it was that you're out there. I was going to fight for two votes, right? <clears throat> no? No, actually, they met last week and they haven't given me their official write up, which is, I want to use theirs instead of my own impression. But they rather like the end of the vote, and I have to tell you that. It's not in the summary because I didn't have that information at that time. But they were kind of an outlier. The rest of it, they actually mirrored the small cities. They like the idea of regional and they actually were supportive. They like the expanded list, but they wanted to make the super majority of the How surprising is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just <laughs> silly perspective. From where it was when I talked to them two years ago, two years ago, they definitely wanted a vote done by population or board membership allocation by population. So even though this is maybe not an answer we like to hear, it's a whole lot better than what we were, we were two years ago with them. Mm -hmm. And so the powers. Okay, same screen, which is correct. Right. Okay, um, item number eight. Great. Would you prefer a governance model which allows for a mixture of jurisdiction staff and elected officials or one which only allows elected officials? Bearing in mind your representatives have been staff. Next. 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 What is the current composition of the, the board? It's mixed. Some elected, some staff. We're six elected for staff. Okay. And the problem with I found with mix with the library JPA is that those two groups look at things very differently and they divide. I'll tell you that staff just like they come in as a block. That was my experience. Often they just. Mm -hmm. That's not been the case, however, in the waste management agency. Yeah, in good. fact, um, I think it's been running pretty mm -hmm. darn smoothly lately. Yeah, it's I'm not in power, it's a block of one. In that staff. Block. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Also, I thought that at least one city that was sort of a non starter, that it was either a mix or they weren't going to play. Yeah, that was a right apart. So the only one that wanted elected officials only was Clover. Well, and that's another problem because that could change every few years. Yeah, there's that continuity. Yeah, continuity. Well, and I'd like to point out something else. We changed our bylaws this last fall mm -hmm. to allow increased access of information to our member governing bodies like yourselves. And key to that was having people like Larry, city manager type people, serve either as our board member or alternate because that allowed them to share that information. So this board that's allows it. alternates? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we found that's huge. Right. The communication piece. Okay. Okay. Number nine? Number nine says, would you prefer a tiered structure of governance which includes a policy making board and a technical advisory committee? Now, it looks like this has gone to the cities for guidance or direction. I believe this was really in here in the event that oh, the direction given would be that the board of directors would be 
only elected and finding a role for staff on a technical advisory committee. That's the reason why I was here, but it now looks like the mixture model is going to work. Uh, it looks, however, the other cities have actually answered this question. So, I don't know, Henry, whether there's still a reason to have a technical advisory committee. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I would suggest that you at least take a few minutes to consider it and let us know how you feel about it. So if the discussion does come up, at least your opinion would be known and considered. Well, it was confusing for me because a board, a board that I am on, who shall go unnamed, um, <laughs> there's a board of directors and it's all elected and then there's, and we don't know anything, we just vote on stuff. And then there's a technical advisory committee that actually knows where the water goes in, where the water comes out, and all that stuff. And they tell us, you know, what we should know. So, I mean, I'm being facetious, but they serve two very different functions. And so that's, I mean, I, I agree if, because like for instance, if you have a mixed board, let's say, you know, Larry's, Larry's on the board, but he's also on the technical advisory committee, that's an unworkable model, you know? I don't really see the need for a technical advisory committee in watching the functions of this board. We have knowledgeable board members and um, they do their homework, so I mean, I'm not sure what the function would be for a technical advisory Well, the opportunity I think is there is to have staff do that and staff have longer tenure often yeah, than Alexis. I agree. I think staff is like your tab. Mm -hmm. I'm fine either way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there is one. Yeah, you know, I think if the board sees the need for it, an advisory committee, that's that should be up to the board. We put this idea together for our strategy meeting a year ago because there was some dissension among our board members about whether there should be or not be an all elected board. And when I visited certain of the cities to find out they were why they were objectionable to having all electeds, just to see what the, the answer I got back consistently was all of us that serve on our councils have day jobs or other activities in our city trying to find enough people to go to these different commitments is difficult and we find it to be really convenient to be able to send a staff member if we can't find them elected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to put something together that would minimize the time commitment. Our thought was if you have a split policy board and an operating decisions tack, you'd meet every other month with each one, each one of them. Mm -hmm. And that would limit the time exposure to elected officials and maybe make it a little more palatable. And basically, you know, the you know that I think has changed because of people recognizing that the mixed model works. Mm -hmm. But that's how it started. And it kind of a life of its own. Would the council direction then be that if the agency board wants to have a tiered structure, then this council would support that and then would direct that the policy making board be elected and the tech be staff? Well, I think our preference is that it's a mixed board. Mixed board. And should that not be the case, then we would say that a tech would be preferable to have in addition to the governing board. significant preference is to have a mixed board so that the need for a tap goes away. Could yeah, I characterize your desire for a mixed board to be, say, showstopper, that you take it that seriously? That that's something you really would not care to budge on if you didn't? Well, look at the SCTA, for instance. Twelve members, nine cities, three from the county, everybody's elected. I think that's a good policy making board. It seems that that's a functional model. The problem, ma'am, is that we are an even mix of policy decisions and then real operating decisions. We're kind of operating that regard. So that's where the perspective of different people really does help. So our problem is the way the question.
question is written isn't exactly relevant anymore. Okay. Right, that's, that's right. It's not really relevant anymore. And also, again, with one city saying that they have to have a mixed board or they're not going to participate is um, pretty much settles that question if the agency is going to go forward. Which city was that? Roanoke Park. Whose assistant city manager is <laughs> the board member. That's the kind of behavior that the boards can't tolerate. Does that mean it doesn't work? Okay. Well, take a nap. No. <laughs> okay. So where are we? I'm sorry, it's a little stressful. Well, I actually feel we've gone through the entire matrix and Henry's some okay. uh, summary written down and I have too and that would could conclude the item. That item is concluded. Move on to the reports. So we all need the board for the most effective and quickest discussion. It's 10-15, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have to get some awesome. work done at this hour. Yeah, Thank you very much. This was designed right. with simple questions. Yeah. And, and we can answer those. The difficulty is that we don't know all the backdrop that it's taken all these years. And yeah, I like this. It was slightly more involved than an eye exam. No, which looks better, one or two? <laughs>
um, discussion of future financing, upstream investments, a wellness trust, innovative funding mechanism, capture and reinvest strategy. Importantly, number seven is uh, that we've heard a report from the Institute of Child Success. I gave you their website. Uh, this was a model where what is a traditional government service is funded through private financing, and if the services are delivered, then the private financer makes a profit. So it's taking democracy and making money off of. There was some concern. Uh, Oscar Chavez said, there's a simpler solution, let's just tax corporations <laughs> yeah. appropriately. And, uh, you know, I thought that fits up. I was quite concerned about uh, that trend which seemed completely acceptable to the Department of Health Services people who were there and the staff and to many of the private enterprise people who were on that committee. The second, I mean the last report is on the SCTA RCPA meeting and Mary forwarded out the ABEG report that has, uh, what do they call it, projections? Regional projections. And uh, there's a lot of interesting material in there that was very debated amongst the members. Um, one other change, we moved $500,000 from, that was dedicated for purchase of smart cars to the Clipper services, and that's the universal pass that will get transit customers through the 89 different independent systems that are in the nine Bay Area counties. There are 89 different systems. So, and, and the money was replaced from a different fund. Uh, we all know the Laguna Bridge is underway, that replacement project. Um, the SCT and RCP are going through a website, you know, an RFP for a website upgrade because it's according to what the county's doing, and now we're in that same, we think we're still in that. Well, we hope it's in our budget, I should say, <laughs> right? Right, and then the Measure M bonds were refinanced to save, get this $1.8 million in interest costs, and then more money to be leveraged for the Sonoma Marin Narrows, which we hope will be finished in our lifetime. Okay, okay. That's a good point. Communication, yeah. Sushi Main Days noted, closed session.